Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine and today we're gonna continue with our matter and energy and ecosystems unit with lesson 1.3. For today, what you will need again is a pen or a pencil and some lined or blank paper to record your thoughts. We are gonna be reading an article today around sunlight and life so if you have access to Amplify online, that would be great to get logged in so that you can follow along as we read. Or if your school or school district provided a printed copy of our article set for today, Sunlight and Life, go ahead and get that out. Pause the video right now so you can get your materials ready. Also, if you have a family member or friend, again on video chat, that happens to be nearby with you today to share your ideas, that would be great. And again, if you're following along online, here is your click path for where we're gonna be today. And if you're working together today on paper, if you can go ahead and set up your paper like this, just like last time, our unit title and our lesson title. And if you even have your ideas from last time, it would be great for you to just continue on on that same sheet of paper. Again, go ahead and pause the video so that you can get set up either online or on paper. So last time we were introduced to this Econauts Biodome project that failed. And they called on us to figure out why did the ecosystem collapse and why didn't the plants and the animals have enough of these energy storing molecules to give them the energy that they needed to survive. So go ahead at this time and pause the video and I want you to think about different types of plants in an ecosystem. Maybe plants that are in your ecosystem where you live or plants or animals in some of the ecosystems that you heard about last time when we were considering our biodome. And I want you to answer, could you have an ecosystem without plants? So that's a yes or no answer, but go ahead and explain your reasoning. Explain why you think, yes, I can have an ecosystem without plants, or no, I can't. Today, we're gonna to continue with the same investigation question from last time, this idea of where do the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from? Because if we wanna know why the plants and the animals didn't have enough of them, we need to know where to look first, and where they came from in the first place. As a reminder, here's our definition for what we mean by an energy storage molecule. It's one of these molecules that organisms can use to release the energy that they need to survive and live and grow and reproduce. We're gonna get some background information on these energy storage molecules to help us answer this investigation question from an article set in Amplify called Sunlight and Life. At this time, if you have access to this article set, either in Amplify Online or in a paper version provided by your school or school district, go ahead and pause the video, read that article set, and as you read, I want you to look for information and annotate that information that might be helpful to answer this investigation question. The top of the slide is a reminder if you're online where we are, activity two, lesson 1.3, so you can find the article set. Again, if you have access, go ahead and pause now. So this part of the video is for people who want to follow along with me as I read the Sunlight and Life article out loud. If you've already read the article because you have access to it online or on paper, or you don't wanna to listen to me read through, go ahead and skip over this section of the video. So we're on the introduction, and this is the part that we're gonna look through today. And this picture here has some sun, sunlight and life is the title of our article. And it's kind of making me wonder, is sunlight a part of an ecosystem? Like, does that count? So I'm just gonna mark that question that I have. All right. So the edge of a big lake is full of life. Fish dart through the bright green reeds, ducks dive for algae growing in shallow mud, and insects buzz everywhere. However, if you go out to the middle of the lake and dive to the bottom, you'll find a dead zone. 
a dark and barren area with hardly any organisms. No fish, no plants, not much of anything. Why do some areas support so much life while others are relatively lifeless? To survive, organisms need energy, and this energy comes from energy storage molecules. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that sentence because we're trying to figure out where these things come from. Okay, these molecules store energy that can be released in an organism's body. Energy storage molecules include glucose, starch, and fat. I'm gonna click on these to see what they are. Glucose, a molecule that organisms can use to release energy. It's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. Starch, another type of energy storage molecule also made of glucose molecules connected together. Oh, so that's like a bigger chain of those littler ones. And fat, type of energy storage molecule. Okay. Ecosystems with lots of organisms need to have lots of energy storage molecules to keep all those organisms alive. Some ecosystems contain lots of energy storage molecules, while others don't contain as many. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight, again, this second to last sentence. Ecosystems with lots of organisms need to have lots of energy storage molecules to keep those organisms alive. And this last one is, this last sentence, excuse me, is making me wonder why some ecosystems have more energy storage molecules than others? Because if I can answer that question, I might be able to figure out what's going on with our biodome and why it failed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my question here as a note. Why do some ecosystems have more energy storage molecules than others? Only producers, such as plants, can make the energy storage molecules that fuel life in an ecosystem. Oh, well, that's important. Only producers can make the energy storage molecules that fuel life in an ecosystem. Energy storage molecules are made mostly of carbon, and carbon is all around us in the form of carbon dioxide gas. Producers take in carbon dioxide molecules from the air and water. Using energy from sunlight, producers combine the carbon dioxide molecules with water molecules, changing them into glucose molecules and oxygen molecules. This process is called photosynthesis. Through photosynthesis, producers take carbon from abiotic matter and move it into bionic matter in the form of glucose. Then, the organisms in an ecosystem can use that glucose to make other energy storage molecules like starch and fat. Well, there was a lot in that paragraph, so I'm gonna make a margin note to kind of remind myself what I just read. So I'm gonna choose that sentence, and I'm gonna say in my margin note that photosynthesis is a process done in plants AKA producers, also known as, that takes in carbon dioxide molecules and produces um, energy storage molecules like glucose. Oh, perfect, there's a picture. Let's make that big. So take a moment and look at that image. What is it showing? Tell someone near you if you can. I see that we're talking about something in a leaf here, a chloroplast and that these black things are those carbon atoms. And I have energy from the sunlight coming in, I have that carbon dioxide, I have water, and I am taking out oxygen and glucose. Oh, that reminds me, I don't know if I mentioned water 
in my note. I didn't, so I'm going to fix that. Photosynthesis is a process done in plants, or aka producers, that takes in carbon dioxide and water molecules and produces energy storage molecules like glucose and oxygen, as I see in my picture. I'm going to add that because I, I missed it in the first read. Oftentimes when I make a margin note when reading, I do need to go back and add to it as I get some more information because I might have missed something. So the process of photosynthesis takes place in tiny cell parts called chloroplasts. Only producers have them, so only producers can do photosynthesis. In order to get energy to do photosynthesis, producers need sunlight. So chloroplast, that's that thing up here that I mentioned earlier. So this process happens there. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. But only producers can do this because only producers have those chloroplast things. And in order to get energy, again, they need sunlight. So that answers my question before. Sunlight must be part of an ecosystem because it is needed for producers to do photosynthesis. Okay. Sunlight is one reason some ecosystems have so many more energy storage molecules and so much more life than others. Oh, that answers my other question from earlier, so I'm gonna note that. Before I was wondering why some ecosystems have more energy storage molecules than others, so now it says, well, one reason is because they might have more sunlight. So I'm gonna note that. Uh, more sunlight causes, or let's say can cause, an ecosystem, ecosystem to have more energy storage molecules. We have lots of sunlight here in Denver, so I wonder if our ecosystem has lots of these energy storage molecules. Okay, let's keep reading. With more sunlight, producers like plants and algae can do more photosynthesis. They take more carbon out of the atmosphere and turn it into energy storage molecules to meet their energy needs. As producers make more energy storage molecules, consumers the animals that eat the producers, uh, highlight that if I can, so I remember seeing that term in the sim. The more energy storage molecules from eating the producers. Let me reread that. As producers make more energy storage molecules, consumers, the animals that eat the producers, also get more energy storage molecules from eating the producers. Okay. Again, sometimes I need to reread as I'm reading out loud if I get too ahead of myself with my thoughts. You should try that too. Those consumers use energy from the energy storage molecules to survive and reproduce, increasing in number. Then secondary consumers, the ones that eat the animals, are able to get more energy storage molecules from eating the primary consumers that ate the plants. An ecosystem that gets lots of sunlight can support lots of organisms, while an ecosystem that gets Less sunlight can support fewer organisms. That's a good summary, so I'm gonna highlight that as well. In deep lakes, there are many more organisms living in the shallow water where light can penetrate. In the deepest, darkest waters of the lake, not much life exists. Why does not much life exist in the deepest, darkest parts of the lake? Right, because there isn't enough sunlight. To find out about other ecosystems where the amount of sunlight has a big effect on the amount of living things, read one of the chapters that follow. Again, if you have access to one of the other chapters, go ahead and check them out. As we wrap up today, I want you to make sure you take some time to share the evidence you gathered and your ideas about where the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from and what that might mean about our mission on figuring out why our Econauts biodome failed. If you are looking for an additional challenge, go ahead and complete Lesson 1.3, Activity 4 in Amplify Online. See you next time.